So uh, I was going to talk about uh, themes in PAL 6 for concurrency and parallel computing. Uh, actually, it's uh, something, not that it's, uh, the theory is new, but in PAL 6 they uh, made it in such a way that it's really, uh, you don't see that this is uh, something about parallel. So you use uh, like uh, simple constructions in language, and some of them are really uh, uh, behaving parallel. So you probably want to unplug and plug in again. Yeah. yeah. <coughs> but before that, a small lightning talk about the project that I made uh, like last month, but I was planning to do it for a couple of years. Uh, yeah, so this is uh, the all Pearl Books at Home website. Uh, it's a collection of all the Pearl books that were ever published. Of course, it's not full yet. Uh, so this is the uh, address. The collection together with the library of Liz and Wendy. They have about 400 books and some uh, non books like proceedings from conferences and uh, uh, printed uh, paper courses by Damien Conway and something like that. But still, it's really amazing. When you first see it, you don't believe that it was possible to have so many, like, uh, 14 uh, shelves. And I know that uh, they already bought an additional section for their library. <laughs> so. And uh, last week, uh, or oh, actually, like, uh, yesterday, Philip Prohat made a uh, good impact, uh, contribution. He uploaded nine books, uh, well, in French, of course, some, some of them. But there was uh, only also a really rare book that I've never seen and I, actually i never heard before. Uh, so now there are some statistics. There are just one book for every day right now for the whole year uh, and uh, more than 300 authors, uh, lots of publishers and now there are books in 10 languages. Of course uh, the main language is English and uh, well, unfortunately it's not so, so crowded today. I wanted to ask people what can book in uh, to let me uh, like scan the covers of their books if they have it in different languages, except Russian sanctions about Russians. That I just have like 50 books in Russian at home, so I don't need it anymore. Uh, so the, the first book uh, was uh, published, which is on the website at least, uh, in 1991. This is uh, a and the website also shows you other editions of the same book and editions of the book in different languages. Uh, and this is the uh, book, Quick Refer Reference Guide, which was uh, accompanying the first edition of the book in 1991. I should have it! Yeah, yeah, this is a really uh, <laughs> strange and rare book. It's uh, like 19 pages and it was included in the, just separate, but it was, I don't know, but was it sold together? Uh, but anyway, this is a really uh, rare book, and uh, Philip Bruchat uh, has, has it. Uh, uh, and surprisingly, in 2014 already, you see there are uh, 10 books published. Uh, yeah, but some strange thing happened in 2013, there were no books published two years ago. So some books in 2012, but not in 2013 which is really strange. Uh, the final thing that I discovered is the covers of the books. Uh, well, guess what is the most popular symbol on the cover? It's not a camel, it's, it's pearl. This, uh, this one. And it's really amazing how well, people really use a pearl and a pearl inside a shell. <laughs> no, just while well, there's some fantasy. Uh, like this, uh, like this, and there was uh, these spell what example few editions of uh, books by these publisher and all the, the books are with this pearl thing on it. So it's really crazy. Uh, and uh, these will buy. Well, it's not that crazy considering O'Reilly, which is a publisher, has the copyright on the combination of a camel with pearl. Okay. Yeah, well, well, but it's, yeah. <laughs> it doesn't uh, mean that you have to use this really no. strange. Uh, uh, no. I have one with a monkey, with a couple of monkeys on the cover. <laughs> <laughs> the monkey, yeah. And uh, so this book was published in 2012. It's really a new book, but still, uh, yes, yeah, some fantasy goes further with more than one pill, like this. 
a really small detail which you maybe not see uh. from the beginning in the Czech language. Some go oh the bigger fantasy. I'm not sure that this is a pearl, but probably yes, it's like medical the I don't know what's that. And at the end, uh, some creativity, so it held the bug debugging, uh, so they really debug the big so. Uh, and yeah, with the monkey, so monkey. Uh, and uh, this uh, cover leads to uh, the author Martin C. Brown, uh, who published about 10 books in uh, uh, English about Pillow. Uh, so this is his collection, oh, this is my collection of his books. Uh, so, and let's just look at the books. 1999, just pill, pill, uh, archive, active pill, that's good. Uh, debugging pill, after he was he debugged pill, he discovered this, and then again, complete re reference. This is the last book uh, about pill itself. The next one is, okay, XML processing with pill and something else. And the last book that I have seen, uh, that I have seen well, at least uh, in the collection of pill books, is migration from pill to Python. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, I, uh, I, I picked that book somewhere else, and then I'll pull like it. <laughs> uh, uh, this is the URL to upload the book if you have one. It's really, well, it would be great if some of you uh, have no English books and all that. And uh, the last thing, uh, the last slide will connect uh, uh, me to, will connect this slide and talk to the main talk. Uh, this is the uh, HTML source of the front page. On the front page, I have all these 365 books, uh, uh, small images of them uh, on one page. And to make downloading faster, uh, I just uh, see uh, there are different uh, four level and domains for every image. So there are 16 uh, different domains, and it's really just in the uh, in uh, so it now download instantly. It's much better than it was on one domain before. I'm laughing. But this uh, so it down, it, it is being downloaded in uh, parallel. And my talk is about parallel computing uh, in Pell six. So so Pell six. Uh, uh, there are, as I said uh, a bit earlier, there are um, a set of things in Pell six which are designed and they exist already in the language, so you don't have to uh, use external libraries or something like that, or write your own library for having to count and parallel things there. Uh, so it's parallel features of Perl 6. Uh, Perl was developed for Perl 6 for 15 years, so some uh, might think that this is kind of a fairy tale, but actually <laughs> it works. Actually, this is the future, so it's much better to have this. And a small uh, Forward before I really start, uh, <clears throat> there, there's a, a, a electronic Russian uh, monthly magazine, Prophetic Pill, and every month it publishes a month of articles in Pill, an interview with one of, well, I think it was still little as well, with one of the people uh, from the community. And I just scanned through all the interviews for the last two and a half years, and what we see there. There, uh, every, every time, uh, the editor asks the question, what's the most important feature of the programming language in the future? And what are the answers? The least common is, I don't know, or there's no good answer, I don't know still. Uh, then goes some syntax features, natural language support, minimalism, uh, uh, ability to be extended. But then goes the object orientation, typecasting, robust uh, things, and introspection, really, uh, by the way, in Pell 6 we have really good introspection. And then, uh, environment, like JVM, and JavaScript, let's say, uh, the possibility to connect with other languages easily, uh, working on an embedded system, uh, and some of the general talks like community is important for language, being human, open source, thematic, Sorry, uh, pragmatic. What is it? Uh, mind control. This is the feature of the language in the future. One person said. Uh, well, yeah. This is about pill again. The main specific uh, languages. This one and number one one is parallelism. So it's really just nothing. It's just from two uh, years of interviews. 
do you not score so it's parallel this and how you this kind of problems like just parallelism, what is parallel resources again, parallelism, good parallelism, uh, intuitive again, safe operation, uh, built in threading, so this is what we have had in L6 or will have finally. Um, again parallelism and again good problems. So you see it's a good multitasking. So this is what people really think uh, will appear in the natural future. So finally, back to Pell 6. The idea in Pell 6 is just uh, uh, that programmer does not, does not have to think about how he will uh, create an environment for parallel uh, calculations. So it's just, it's just there. So it's really a uh, minimal, uh, minimal number of keywords that you have to use. But on the outside, you have to understand that sometimes you do not uh, use explicitly, uh, do not tell explicitly that you want to make it parallel, but compiler might uh, uh, might create some parallelity. Uh, so that's actually, uh, I'm talking about, of course, uh, the compiler, uh, which is Rakuta Star, and more the M. I don't uh, know anything else, including Rakuta Star and JVM. But I suppose this one is the most uh, powerful combination. So, so, so there are two things. Well, uh, actually, it's not documented, uh, but it's just my understanding of uh, the things that are there. Uh, there are some uh, implicit and explicit things. So, implicit, I mean uh, that you don't have to say make it parallel or something like that. It's, you just use uh, like plus which is parallel somewhere in the background. So first, uh, operators, uh, hyper-operators. Basically, hyper-operator is a meta-operator. This is the operator, well, infix. So you have two operands uh, on the left right. And this is meta-operator in Pell 6. Every, uh, so meta-operators in Pell 6 are kind of generated by the uh, language itself. So if you define a new uh, operator, you will have a set of meta operators. So if you define plus, you will get a free plus equals. And this is the hyper operator. So it's again, it's a kind of a meta operator which uses some operation which is defined. Uh, there are different forms, also, you can use uh, Unicode characters instead of just a scheme. Uh, this is also so the right different form of the form of this of this. Uh, yeah, it's a bit really crazy at at the beginning. Uh, so yeah, but uh, right <laughs> different forms of it, including uh, instead of plus, you can use uh, like uh, less operator, and it, it will uh, also be uh, possible to use it as hyper operator in this form. Or maybe this one. The hyperoperator are really, really simple. So if you have these operators, uh, operator between two different arrays, uh, basically uh, it it is exactly the same as uh, making for every element uh, in every array making this combination. Or you can, you don't have to have arrays on both sides. Uh, you can uh, make it with uh, like array and scalar. It's exactly the same. The only thing is that if we go back, you see uh, the uh, arrows of these uh, brackets, angles. Uh, if the uh, sharp pointer points to uh, the list which contains less elements than the other one, then this list will be uh, duplicated as many times as needed to cover all the elements in the long array. So if you uh, reverse uh, the direction of these, these arrows, compare would say you don't have enough elements in the array on the right side. So actually this, uh, this is addition, so the position of these arrows is additional indicated to the compiler to understand what the programmer really meant. So then, uh, yeah, and uh, these hyperoperators are, uh, so you never, uh, I never mentioned that this is uh, something uh, about parallel computing, but actually all these rows can be uh, evaluated 
in parallel. So if uh, cheese is like multi-core, uh, uh, this multi-core process processor, uh, these operations are completely independent, so the compiler can make it in parallel. And all you need for that is just to use hyperoperator. So when you use it, the compiler can or or if you can, if it can. I'm not sure that this is uh, completely not implemented, but still uh, the design is to make uh, such things parallel. And of course, the, well, yeah, if there are no side effects. Uh, it will work, but it won't do it in parallel. Yeah, yeah, of course it works now, but it's just sequential. So when you have really, yeah. yeah so uh, could you please return back to the, uh, uh, yeah, so uh, could you uh, like uh, list what it means that the plus has uh, greater than, greater than on the left, or less than, less than on the left, and the other way on the right? You mean, uh, what, what, you, you want me to explain all these combinations? Like, like uh, <laughs> if you have the, uh, yeah? like something like that, you said you point towards the list that should be uh, prepotent, like it should, it should have the... Uh, the uh, yeah, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. So this, uh, or this, uh, uh, requires two uh, lists of the same lens. So this uh, okay. why uh, requires uh, so like ten elements there, <laughs> ten elements there. Mm -hmm. uh, if you uh, reverse this to like uh, this form, uh, here is uh, here should be more elements yeah. than here. Mm -hmm. So and all these elements will be duplicated as many times as needed. And uh, same thing for this. So yeah. just again longer here. Yeah. And if you have uh, like this one, it doesn't matter which uh, side uh, has uh, fewer elements. Okay, and, uh, and omitting one of them means just the, uh, like the, the other uh, should be the wrong one? Omitting what? Omitting one of them. You, see, you mentioned one that is just like greater than, greater than, plus, and that's it. Ah, no, 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 no. Uh, no. Uh, so, uh, this is plus, uh, uh, this is infix. It mm -hmm. means that it requires two yeah. operands, left and right. But also this plus, uh, which is the unary one. Yeah, yeah. So, you don't have, so you don't have to have uh, the second part. Does it answer? Yeah. yeah, thank you. Okay, so the next thing is junctions. Junctions, or as Damien Comedy uh, called them, quantum superpositions. <laughs> uh, yeah, but he's a physicist, and it's really <clears throat> something like that. But actually, it means that many values will be treated as a single value at the same time. Again, uh, this is an idea of parallel, uh, maybe not now, but in the future. Uh, so, what is a junction? Junction is kind of a combination of uh, uh, values and pipes between them, and it goes to a scalar area, uh, uh, which is uh, uh, of a junction type. And then you can use this uh, variable uh, where you can use a scalar. So here you will just compare uh, like three single scalar value with another scalar, but at the same time you will you will compare all these four alternatives at the same time. So uh, instead of writing the three equals one or equals two or you can just use junctions and, and here you are. So this uh, example is really expected to print. Uh, there are different types of junctions, uh, there are operations of, uh, on them, but it's not that important. And feeds. <coughs> there's a feed operator. Uh, it looks like, so there's an array of 10 elements, and this is the green one is the feed operator. So basically it shows the direction uh, in which data should go. So the data from the A uh, array uh, go to grep. Uh, and it grabs, so uh, it like selects all the Numbers. <clears throat> the thing is, well, it was possible like, to use a regular form of grep, uh, grep something, comma, uh, a. But in this case, it's much better to, much much easier to uh, organize sequences of, of these feeds. <clears throat> and you just read it as is. Array goes to grep, then the result goes to map, and yeah, here we are. Uh, if you uh, use build five. You have to read it from back, uh, to, from end to uh, the beginning, uh, which is not uh, really good sometimes. Uh, 
and on this arrow again can be pointed to other uh, direction. It doesn't matter. The important thing is in the future that each feed could run in a separate set. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Each, so each feed. The, the map could be working on the first results of the graph, but the graph is still not done the last of the uh, Yeah, so you, you don't have to wait uh, when the graph makes uh, his job for the whole array. If you have the first value, you can already map it. And uh, if the array is lazy, this is really uh, a good thing to start uh, working with there if you can. Uh, more about uh, all the buff uh, is uh, available on uh, YouTube in Patrick's uh, talk. Actually, it's, yeah, it's 2013, a bit outdated, but still, he explains in uh, detail all this stuff with uh, feeds and uh, races and hypers and stuff. Uh, then, uh, now, what, what I, for me, uh, call uh, implicit features of Perl 6 for concurrency. Channels, it's almost the same thing as in language Go. <clears throat> so you create the channel and you can uh, send data to it and you can receive it. Because this simple example is uh, uh, useless, you send and you receive at the same time. Uh, but you can, uh, like for example, first send it. Uh, this is a kind of a stack and you can uh, Pull it, pull it, uh, pull everything that is already there. Uh, so channels, yeah, it's a, it's a really good thing. If uh, the, the idea is, uh, if you have several like, threads, channels should work <coughs> safely. So you can push data in, in data uh, into the channel in one thread and read it somewhere else, uh, and then. Those promises. Promises uh, is another concept available already uh, in Barracuda. Uh, uh, so you create a promise. It's an object. Uh, it's basically an object uh, which, uh, like a real promise, can be either broken or kept. So if, and there's a method uh, status which tells uh, what is the current status of this promise. So if you just create a promise, it is just planned. Uh, you don't know whether it's kept or not. No, there's just uh, no information available. But you can keep it, call key method, then it's kept, or you can break it, and it's broken. And it works. <laughs> but of course, yeah, it's again uh, really simple. But it's uh, when you, uh, or actually, I'm going to make another talk uh, to demonstrate these things in uh, more interesting examples. But still, we have to understand how it works uh, on simple examples. And uh, for promises, there are factory methods which uh, just generate uh, promise objects. One of them is start, uh, which is also available as a separate keyword just uh, without mentioning the class promise. Uh, so you can create uh, the promise, and in uh, $p, this is uh, in prospection, in prospection, in prospections. Uh, inspection uh, uh, method which returns the name of the class, so this is promise. So you create the promise, some block of code, it doesn't matter now what's inside, but just some code which is executed. And the thing is that uh, uh, here you don't uh, maybe see it, but uh, this start should be uh, run in parallel. Um, not a parallel universe, but still, if you have uh, two, uh, uh, two uh, if you call it twice, you will create two threads. I'm not sure about threads, if, if it's thread or something like uh, something else. Yeah, it's, it's scheduled for execution. <laughs> this is, that's what it says. It's scheduled for execution, we don't know when uh, it's going to happen. And they could be running on the same thread in the end, or on different threads. Oh, we don't know. Yeah. yeah, so uh, th this is uh, actually... A, uh, what is maybe uh, sometimes weird, but uh, really it's good. You, uh, the design just defines how it should work, and you don't have to understand really how it works in parallel. They just say it's the same and stuff. So, uh, you see, uh, I create here two uh, different promises, uh, and the code in each is just C for two seconds. And if I immediately after creating them, uh, we'll try to access the status value. 
I will receive plan. So uh, this will uh, be returned just immediately, so no delay, and after that the program will exit. So uh, this will not uh, uh, wait for either two or four seconds. Uh, to wait, I have to make some additional actions. Uh, probably the simplest uh, is just to wait more than two seconds. And again, if after that you will uh, access status, you will get kept both of them. Uh, or you can, uh, yeah, there, uh, there's an example later. So basically, so it's not threat, as we know, but yeah, it's. But it's a core return, right? It's not about promises. It returns promise, but it's not promise. Right. And you could also use uh, the channels also for instead of promises. Because promises are not essential oh, part well. of it. Well, how, how can this channel instead of promise? Promise is just a yeah. I mean, yes, promise is a third level of the coroutine you, you just launch in the background, right? Yes, and? And instead of this, you can just pass the, the channel and use in the block. Channel, channel no, no, no. Right? Channel is just a uh, pipe. Uh, it's just a queue, basically. In, 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 in block 5, it will be uh, what's called again, thread queue. Basically, that's from the channel. So it's uh, completely, and uh, yeah, later you will see the slide special for you. Uh, uh, so anyway, uh, there's another uh, factor method, uh, in, and there's another one uh, which is called add, that creates a promise uh, which will be kept by a compiler in a given number of, required number of seconds. Or if it's not in but add, it will be uh, kept at a certain moment. You, uh, uh, have to pass the timestamp to it. So if you create this method and then try to, like for every second, for uh, the next five seconds, <coughs> to try to read the status of this promise. And by the way, uh, you notice how the code interpolation works in uh, code six strings in double quotes. So it's just a process and just a piece of L6 go inside and it works. Uh, so, and it will, so every second it will be printing the panel. So you see, you do, do have, you do nothing, but some promise somewhere in the background somehow changes, uh, changes uh, its state, uh, its state uh, when it was required. So, example connected to this sleep sort. I believe you know what the algorithm is. This is just uh, all this big page on the set of code with all the different packages starting from shell and sleep. So the, the idea is you pass the numbers, the list of numbers, and you make like sleep is the value of each uh, argument. Sleep five seconds, sleep two seconds. And after each sleep is done, you print the value. So and finally you will uh, give you will get the list of values in the correct order. So we start with the uh, arguments in code 6, and this is the replacement of uh, the one arms uh, in memory. Uh, <coughs> so you, you got the cycle, and you create a promise. With, so dollar $A is uh, one of the arguments of the common line. Uh, yeah, I assume it is uh, integer. Oh, it can be uh, floating, floating point value as well, it doesn't matter. And there's another method for them, which will be called when the promise is kept or broken. So you wait, basically, this is the replacement of sleep function, and then you just print it. And uh, I would like to uh, collect, uh, like all the books, but in this case, all the promises uh, in a separate place, because I have to wait until all of them are kept. And also, uh, note uh, that... Do you really have to flatten the code? Yeah, 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 I tried it, uh, but it doesn't work without this. How long ago did you try that? Uh, three months ago. Hmm. <laughs> yeah, so anyway, maybe, maybe not, but the uh, thing is that when you do this, uh, the spell 6 can accept uh, arrays, in uh, functions, it just uh, sits in one place for argument list, 
So to make it uh, uh, really uh, the least of uh, arguments, you have to flatten the gigabyte. Well, it would, I think that's a problem. I don't think you need to uh, flatten it. But yeah, that's, that's good. Of course, it would be much easier to uh, not print it. So and then you uh, call the script, pass a few numbers, press enter, and it prints sequentially. So yeah. Uh, so this is for you. So you, uh, you've got <laughs> promises and you've got channels, and uh, so you can use channels to communicate between different to the code and different promises. So I didn't try it yet. I'd like to make something useful. Uh, and next, uh, I'm not going to talk about this today, but someday maybe I will uh, make a presentation about that. So there are lots of uh, other things that I didn't mention. There are schedulers, suppliers, uh, and uh, suppliers can work with input output. Basically, this potentially can be a replacement of, uh, how is it called, uh, I notify the, the library which uh, gives you the signal when the file is changed. Uh, well, signals, uh, threads, uh, atomic operations, kind of transactions. So you can do something if it, if, if it was done successfully, but okay, if not, then like you think that nothing changes at all. Uh, Locks and semaphores, I guess that's it. So yeah, so it's really an uh, interesting thing to learn and to test. And I will be <laughs> explaining <laughs> the concurrency in detail. <laughs> so what was it? And by atomic you mean transaction memory, right? Uh, it's transaction. It's something like transaction. So there's no STM in politics. There used to be a, uh, a synopsis for uh, yeah, 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 yeah. concurrency that included STM, and which yeah. I wrote somewhere around 2006. Uh, this has definitely been shelved until post P60, uh, if ever. Um, I do see some cheap STM things possible in the future, but. It won't be soon. Yeah. It's not expected at the moment. This is about the synopsis number 17 uh, with the Liz and uh, Jonathan, I think. Yeah, Jonathan yeah, was the CMC. Yeah. Yeah. And then I added some to it. Okay, so any other questions? Uh, What's the general approach to runtime exceptions in the parallel kind of universe, if you like? So, say if you're Doing five things at once, one of them fails. Well, there are two. Yeah. Uh, yeah. You, if, you, oh, just um, if you're using uh, the start mechanism, it will break the promise. And uh, you can ask the promise what the exception was. So it won't it tear everything down. It will just basically break the promise. And in Pulse 6, there's also an additional thing of uh, support the soft failures. It means that if a <coughs> failure happens, like division by zero, and you don't uh, use the result which contains the failure, you will not notice and nothing like uh, happens. And you have a race of composition for promises? Like yeah, yeah, yeah. <coughs> there are any of uh, all of uh, like the methods yeah. which can uh, like uh, use a bait as well as that. Yeah. Okay, so uh, thank you.